Great. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, it's now one o'clock here on the East Coast, so we'll go ahead and and get this session started. Really um, appreciate everybody joining, and I really hope that you all are, are having a, a great experience thus far. Um, I know I joined the keynote this morning and uh, at least one of the other sessions, and so far I thought everything was, was really awesome. So I hope that um, all the attendees out there are having a great time so far. So uh, my name is Steve Weller, and uh, I'm going to be the presenter for today. Um, today's session that we'll be doing is called uh, the Block Coding Party. And without further ado, I think uh, in the interest of time, we'll go ahead and get started. So um, just a short presentation, uh, be pretty quick here, but just to kind of uh, get everybody um, up to speed and, and oriented here. Um, so we have a couple session uh, participants here, uh, myself and um, some of the great folks that are listed here on this page. So I'm really grateful um, for the, the team effort in putting together this session for you all. And, and again, hope that it'll be really um, beneficial for you. Um, in your chat already, in fact, I'll bring up chat here in just a second if I can. Ooh, well, let me see it right now. So, um, oh, here it is. Um, so yeah, in chat uh, right now already, I have put in some code or some parts here. So hopefully you can find it. We're gonna be um, selecting, basically this will be the first location we go to and I'll make sure to share them again in chat. But um, they're the links that are gonna be here. And again, we'll make sure that everybody has what they need. Um, but we're gonna be basically starting our work on arcade.makecode.com. I do have a link to the activity guide, which might be useful. Um, and I, in fact, I think it will be. I'll, I'll have it up on the screen at times. Um, but if you want to, again, I'll, the activity guide is linked in the chat. That should be one of the first messages there. And uh, you can certainly follow along there. So OK, great. Um, welcome. Again, I'm really excited to have everybody here. Um, today, we're going to be making a, a game, um, a simple game using block coding. Um, and we're going to be doing that with uh, Microsoft Make Code Arcade. Cool. So let's just, you know, just a quick, you know, discussion around like creating a game, and and let's kind of just think a little bit broadly about what we're about to do. So, you know, a, a game has a couple of main components, and I think the three components that are listed on this slide is going to be code, which is of course it's going to be telling basically the the, the computer. Uh, what to do um, depending on certain events and certain things that happen. So, um, so we'll be dealing a lot with code today. Um, art, of course, is a big component of a game. Um, if you think about some of the more modern games like Fortnite and things like that, um, I think that the the overall like kind of look and feel of the game um, is art. And today, the art that we'll be doing, we'll do like a little bit of a scene setup as well as we'll have player sprites as well as like projectile sprites. We'll be defining a sprite in just a moment. And then story, like the game that we're doing today is rather simple. It doesn't necessarily have a story, but hey, maybe we can think one up as we go. Um, types of games, you know, I can tell that uh, someone in my era kind of made this particular slide again, because I think that if there was folks your age, you know, the attendees age, these would probably not be the games that you would think of as examples. You know, I kind of listed Fortnite as, as a popular game, right? Um, so things like that might show up here if you were the one creating the slide, but, you know, just wanted to mention a couple types of games, again, to kind of get your mind thinking here. But we've got um, the game that we're going to do today, and I'll show it in just a moment, is going to be an action game. But of course, you could probably think of adventure games, role-playing games, and, you know, sports games, things like that as being some examples. Um, there's even like text-based games and puzzle games, things of that nature. So again, we'll see in a moment here, I'll bring up the Make Code Arcade and show you a little bit about what, what it looks like. And that's where we're going to be doing all of our work. Um, but basically, uh, in Make Code Arcade, um, this is kind of what the code is going to look like that we're going to be using today. Again, we're going to be leveraging block coding for our purposes. Uh, Make Code Arcade does have the ability to do it in JavaScript, as well as I think Python is another language that it supports. Um, so those are some other languages that if you have interest, you know, you can always come back later. Um, and again, the, the website's free, don't, doesn't seem to require any type of login. So after today, you could certainly go out there and, and keep learning more and, and just kind of um, seeing what other things they have to offer there. 
But what's cool is we'll, at the end of the session, we'll be playing our game in the simulator. So just quickly here, I'm already watching my time. Um, so we're gonna, I'll be referencing as we go through some of the areas in Make Code Arcade. And one of them is gonna be the script area. Um, there's of course gonna be the game simulator. And I'll show you again in a moment what those look like for our purposes. Uh, but then there's sprites. So we will definitely be creating a sprite today. Um, we have both like a player sprite as well as projectile sprites. And, and sprites are just really kind of like little pieces of art that we can utilize in our game. Um, coordinates, you know, if you remember back here, just looking at this simulator screen, you know, we're going to define where things are on the X and Y axis for this screen. And of course, that's going to be um, some coordinates that we're going to be using here. And I have to remind myself of this. Um, you know, the x-axis is across the top and the y-axis is uh, vertical. And I'm sure you all know that, but for me, I had to, I had to make some notes. Um, so again, we'll be utilizing the coordinates here quite a bit in our game. Um, variables are useful. Um, we're going to be utilizing variables today to kind of be able to just kind of shorthand for our code. Um, I kind of like the reference that they make on this slide here, which is like, you know, we'll be using a variable. We would call something like pens. And instead of saying, hey, pick the third pen from the left or the second from the right, uh, we just say grab a pen. And because it's a variable, it will just go and pull anything from that bucket and, and place it in. Controller is a lot what you would think of, you know, kind of like a gamepad or something like that. Um, and for our purposes today, our input device is going to be our keyboard. Um, you could also use a mouse uh, to control the joystick in the simulator. But really, the controller and the controller blocks is going to be like basically what do, what happens when we press a button. It also supports what happens when you release a button, hold a button. But for today, we're just going to be pressing a button. The scene, it's kind of like what it suggests, this is going to be kind of what is around the game that we're going to be playing. Um, info we'll, we'll utilize in today's session. Info is going to be things like game elements, score. So you're going to see today, we're going to say like at game start, set the score at zero. And then on certain events, we're going to change the score or reduce life. All right. The game and the game settings here within Make Code Arcade are going to be things that let us control what happens during the game, you know, on certain interval or at game over, for example. So we'll be utilizing that today as well. So I know I just kind of rushed through that, but we're going to want to save our time here for the actual yeah. coding. I think before we start off with it, uh, we can have a poll. OK, Padmini, you want to go ahead and put that up? Yeah, I'll start a poll for all of you. Please answer. And while that poll is being answered, Padme, I'm going to go ahead and bring up my screen here. Okay, great. So I'm going to end the poll here. It looks like, um, based on what I'm seeing here, uh, uh, you know, about a third, just slightly more here, have done nothing. You know, have not had exposure. Another third have had some experience in block coding. And then I see we've got some folks that are a little bit more advanced here with touching on JavaScript, Python, and others. So that's great. Maybe I didn't press share results. Sorry. Still learning how to use this interface. So great. OK, thanks, Padmini. Yeah. So um, if everybody can, the, to get the, the party started, if you will, we're going to go to uh, arcade.makecode.com. I'll go ahead and paste it in the chat again for everybody so you can quickly get there. I'm going to share. One other piece that we're going to need here in just a second. Um, bear with me one moment here. Apologies, there was one thing I could not easily copy and paste from my PDF. So, okay, great. So, hopefully, everybody is at the Make Code Arcade page now. Um, so. I do want to point out that while there is a sign in button here, there is absolutely no requirement to sign in for this. We can do the entire activity, including the sharing of the game later without signing in. So to get things started, we're going to go ahead and press this import button. And the reason why we're going to do this today is we're just going to save a little bit of time uh, so that you don't have to create the projectiles. Um, so they're just drawings of arrows. So we went ahead and created them for you because we thought that we, we wanted to show that presentation and ensure there was enough time. 
So what you'll do if you didn't see what I did is I'm just going to click the import screen here or the import button rather. We're going to choose the middle option and then uh, I'm going to paste this in chat as well. Um, we're going to import that particular URL that I just pasted in chat. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. I'm going to do control V into mine. I'm going to say go ahead. And what that's going to do is that's going to launch the um, uh, this interface. Now, while folks are, are finishing that step, I'll just say that what we can, if you want to validate that you did it appropriately, you can click on assets here in the orange bar. And you should see some of the arrow assets that I referenced earlier, as well as two color tiles. Okay, I'm going to press blocks to get back. And I'm just going to quickly talk about the three sections of the screen here. So this leftmost section of the screen is going to be our game simulator, as mentioned. Uh, what I'm going to refer to as kind of the middle section is going to be our, our code and our code blocks that we'll see in a little bit that we'll be interacting with. And then finally here on the rightmost is going to be what we're referring to as the editor, or the script editor. All right. So at this point, again, um, everybody should be at this point. So let's keep moving forward. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set our scene. And if you remember previously, the scene is kind of like going to be, in this case, it's going to be the background and, and where our game is played. So the first step in our process here is we're going to click on scene. And in the scene, there's actually a few sections here, screen, camera, effects. We're actually going to go down to tile maps. And it's a drag and drop type of functionality here. So I'm just going to grab this one here under tile maps, set tile map to tile map, and then it has a gray square. And I'm going to kind of pull that off of that menu. And I'm still holding on to it with my left mouse button here. And I'm just going to drop it here into the on start block. OK. Now we'll pause in a moment to make sure everybody's with me. But um, I'm going to keep going a few more steps here. So once we've placed the set tile map, onto the on start block, you can go ahead and click in the tile map. Okay. The very first thing that we want to do here is uh, on the bottom of the screen, we're going to kind of lock the size of, of our scene. And so what I'd like for you to do at the bottom here is we're just going to put in 10 by 8. So I just typed in 10 and I hit tab and it brought me over to the other thing. And then I'm just going to hit this lock. Um, in the guide, I'll just pull it up here for a second. In the guide, I do have a description that I'll also go over here in just a second. But some of the places in the screen that we're about to work in, when I'm referring to the pencil, that's going to be this tool. Um, hopefully, these will be relatively uh, familiar for you. But the paint can is going to be here. I'll point to these as I work on them. We're going to be using the draw wall tool here in a moment. Um, you'll see I'm going to direct us to go under my tiles. And then here's the tile map size that we just worked on. So if you didn't quite catch that, this is where we set it to be 10 and 8, and then hit that lock button. So back on the editor screen here, um, what we're going to do is um, we're going to, first thing we're going to do is click on the fill tool. Once you've clicked on the fill tool, we're just going to click on my tiles and select the blue color. And now, Kind of generic, if you will, but uh, I have selected um, for these purposes. Move this back over. Uh, I selected blue, kind of for the sky, pretty obvious. But I said, you know, later after today or after the session's over, you can certainly come in here and change these things to be any color you you would actually prefer. But in the interest of time, I would suggest utilizing the two colors that we have. So I've now created the background or the sky to be blue. Um, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be clicking this pencil button, and I'm going to click the other color. Because for this game, oh my gosh, I never showed you the game. What am I doing? Sorry, that's a big piece here. Y'all can't let me forget to show you the game that we're about to make. Holy cow, I've really messed up. Let me show you the game we're going to make. Yeah, meanwhile, let me uh, start a poll where we can know if everybody is able to reach to here. OK. While you're doing the pull, Padme, I'll just say this is the game that we're going to be creating. And I apologize, I didn't show it. It's basically um, a game here where we have projectiles that are going to be falling kind of from the ceiling. And we'll have a player sprite here, which for me um, right now is basically this little pizza. 
not the best at this, but I'm the, to get to the various arrows, you obviously push the arrow buttons on my keyboard to kind of match up. And so I apologize, it's useful for you to see the game when I start talking about it, but you'll see here the point that I wanted to make is the, the blue being kind of the sky and the purple being kind of the floor. Um, and so that's what we're going to do now is um, because I hadn't showed you, it just wasn't very clear. But yeah. if you remember. Again, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, two out of six participants have uh, showed in the poll that they are not able to catch up. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, could you please uh, tell us uh, through chat if what is the doubt or what, where are you stuck? We'll try to help you out. Thanks, Padmini. So, okay. Okay, great. Thanks again, Padmini, for putting that in. So, um, Anne Marie, you were back earlier, mentioned that you weren't sure where we even did the import. So that's cool. Let's let's just step back for just a second in case anybody had missed that. Um, the very first step that we wanted to do here will provide this this section here. You don't have to um, do this. Uh, again, so if you've already done it, um, but how you would do this if you have a question about it was in the import URL. And I just pasted in here um, the same URL that's in the chat. And press go ahead and that'll, that'll achieve that goal. Once we're in here, all we've done so far is after the import, we just validated really that our assets existed. There was not anything that really needed to be done there. Then what I asked folks to do was um, within sprites, or excuse me, <laughs> uh, under scene, I apologize. Um, this is where we had scrolled down to tile map. And we drag that to the on start block. And then um, to the rest of the folks, um, that's when we came in here. First thing we did was we filled, I'll do it again, fill basically this whole space with the blue color. And then switching to the pencil, I'm just going to be creating this purple line across the bottom. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to keep moving on here, um, and then we'll check in a few moments here if everybody is still with us. So once we've got kind of the colors the way we want, um, if you remember in the game the way that I showed it, there are things that are hitting like we need to have kind of a wall. And if you see here, like we're going to consider the wall to be the, the floor effectively. So in order to make that happen, there's a special um, tool here. It's called Make Walls. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to overwrite the same purple section with the walls. And so that way, the code will understand um, what is considered a wall. So I'm going to say done here. And I'll stop um, and just say that at this point, um, the tile map and your game simulator should look like this. So now that we've completed that step, let me close some of these items here. Um, we're going to move on to the, the next item, which is um, we're going to also do like a start start effect when we um, when we start the game. So still under scene, um, there's a third section effects. So under scene, you'll see screen camera effects, and I'm going to grab start screen confetti effect, and I'm going to take that and I'm going to just pull it over here, and then I'm going to drag and drop it under the on start um, code block. Um, you can change the confetti to be anything that you would like from the drop down list. Um, my daughter, when I tested this with her, she liked to do bubbles, for example, which come up from the bottom. But um, because the end result of my um, activity here does utilize confetti, I'm going to keep mine as confetti. Uh, and that takes us to the end of kind of the first Section. So Padmini, maybe let's just do a quick check to see how we're doing um, and see sure. if everybody's caught up with us. Thank you. OK. Great. And for the one individual who is not quite prepared, perhaps you can ask the question um, in chat. Just make sure that when you ask questions, you don't provide any sort of personal information. Okay, 
So I'm going to try to keep moving forward here a little bit. So let's move on to what would be step, uh, what I call step three. So, you know, step, um, so at this step, this is where we're going to go in and create our player sprite, okay? So we've we've gotten our, um, our, our on start, we've got our tile map, we've got some confetti. So now we just need to, to create our player. Okay, so uh, for this part under sprites, the very first option is set my sprite to sprite block of kind player. And that is what we're gonna kind of drag out and also drag to the on start screen. Now, once you've completed that, there's another step where we're going to be renaming the variable. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my sprite here, and I'm going to go down to rename variable, and I'm going to type player one and say OK. So again, just for, for folks that it might be um, you know, a little uh, not as quick as I am here since I've done this a few times. Um, what I did again here was just uh, within sprites, I grabbed the very first, dragged it out here, then dragged it to the on start menu. I clicked rename variable and I named it player one. Okay. So now we're going to kind of make our player sprite. And in the interest of time, um, what I would recommend here is when you click on, I'm going to just click on this gray box. And what should happen is on your screen, it should bring up that same editor that we used previously. But you can also choose gallery and my assets. For this purpose, we're going to choose something from the gallery. If you, you might remember from um, the game that I had created here, my, uh, the player sprite that I've selected is the small pizza. You can really select anything that you want from here. Um, some of the uh, some of the icons or sprites, I should say, are larger than others. But in my testing, it didn't seem to impact gameplay. You can choose anything you want from here. Again, to be consistent with the example that I have, I'm going to choose the small pizza, which is this guy here, and I'm going to say done. Okay. And at this point in the code, what we should see here is again, we've got our tile map, the confetti effect, and then now we have our player sprite, which is kind of floating in the middle here. This isn't exactly what we want, because if you recall, when we actually play the game, um, our player sprite here is going to be more towards the bottom of the screen. So in order for that to happen, um, we're just going to simply go, so I'm looking at my own notes here, um, sorry, under back under the sprite section here under physics so create and then physics there is set my sprite position to x and y so i'm going to grab this and i'm going to drag it out here so that we say hey on start i want and we're about to make a little change here because if you're like me you just got an error and that's because if you remember we referred to variables before right now this is an undefined variable so it doesn't like that so it's very simple to fix. Um, we're just going to click on my sprite and we're going to switch it to player one because now we're saying, hey, for that same variable, you're going to set it to look like a little pizza. And now here I'm going to tell you where to set the position. And the position that we want is going to be 80. You can see 80 is the center of the screen for the X coordinate and then 100 for Y. And all I pushed there was tab. Um, tab is, is how I oriented through this. So I'm just going to do it one more time. I'm going to just type 80, tab 100, but of course, kind of messes it up for me. And I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to stop here for just a moment because I, I believe that this is the end of this particular step. Um, you all should basically just have these couple lines here, and your um, game simulator should show something similar to the following, depending on what you chose, with your sprite now being at the bottom. All right, great. So um, let's go ahead and start to do controls because we do need to tell the game what to do when we, you know, maybe move up, left, down, right, or maybe when we push buttons. Okay. So in this case, we're going to be talking about what to do when we push the arrow button. So right, left, up, and down. So the controller options, as you might imagine, are going to be here in, in the middle column under controller, and under the very top single player, we're going to be grabbing this statement that says, you know, on event, 
to do something. So in this case, the, the default says on a button press, and we're gonna drag that out to a new section on our, um, on our code editor. So once you've dragged that out, and again, that was controller on a button press, I just dragged that out to the, the script editor. And once I've done that, I'm gonna actually make a change here and I'm gonna change it to the right, okay? We're gonna make it for all four directions here in a moment, but we're gonna start off with what's gonna happen when we press the right arrow key. And what we want to happen when we press the right arrow key, if you, can, if you think about, again, the game that I've got created here, You'll notice if I push right, I go all the way over to this far column. Whereas if I push, well, I can't do it because it's playing, but if I push like left, far left, this is up, down, and then right. So I need to tell the where to put my player sprite when we push the right button. So in order for that to happen, um, we're going to go back into sprites and we're going to go here to physics and we're going to select set my sprite position to x0, y0. I'm going to pull that code out and we're going to drop it under this controller block. Okay. Now you might have just noticed that I got an error here. And that's again because this variable is currently undefined. And that's fine because what we want to do is we're just going to tell it that we're actually talking about the variable player one. So all I'm going to do is click the arrow button here, and I'm just going to change that to read player one, and it will become happy. I also, though, need to tell it where to, where to go. And if you remember, um, x being 130 is going to be that far right column. OK, and we're going to, so we're going to set that to, um, sorry about that, 130 by 100. So, 130 by 100 is going to be the bottom center of the screen here. Sorry, it just took me a second because I just had to remember uh, zero would be here on the x axis. And so the numbers increase going this direction and the numbers increase going this direction. It just threw me for a second. But at, <clears throat> at this point, we should have uh, information on the right button. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate these so that we have one for right, left, up, and down. And I'll, I'll kind of go slow here. But so what I'm going to do is there's a few places you could click on to select a duplicate. So you're going to want to be kind of careful. And you're going to want to right click on the actual um, on right button press block itself and just press duplicate. And it's going to kind of do exactly what you would think it would do. It's going to duplicate that block. And right now, it's a little unhappy because this already exists. That's OK. We're going to fix that in just a moment. And we're going to just duplicate this a total three times. And the purpose here, just to explain what we're going to do, is we're going to tell it what to do if we press right, left, up, or down. OK? So I like to organize these a little bit um, so that they make sense to my, my brain. And so I'm just going to kind of organize these as follows. Um, right, we've already done. So I'm going to switch this one. I'm just going to be changing the variables that we're referencing here. And I'm going to switch this one at the top to up. I'm going to switch this one on the left to left. I'm going to switch the one on the bottom to down. And don't worry, I'm going to check on everybody before I move forward. But now all we need to do is, is the, the y, the y um, axis does not need to change at all. We just need to change because the y100 is down at the bottom here. So we just need to change the x axis. Um, I'm going to go ahead and paste into the chat as well the um, the locations, but basically I'm gonna I'm gonna start with up and I'll I'll move around. So for up, um, what we want to do is we just need to modify the position to be sixty. So that would be the x uh, the x coordinate from um, I think it was at one thirty because that's what I duplicated, and I'm gonna change that to read sixty, and the y axis is is unchanged. Okay, so now up and right are done. For left, what I had just pasted in chat says that the uh, x position for left should be 60. I'm going to go ahead and type that in here. Again, no need to change y100. That's going to stay the same. And then down, down is going to be 100. Okay. So I'm going to pause here for just a second so that you all can see the code. Up should be 60 by 100. Left should 
Oh, I screwed up here somehow. Hold on. Up 60, down 100. Left, I did make a mistake. 30. I apologize, everyone. Even I've done this a few times and it's still easy for me to make a mistake. So left being the 30, up 60, right 130, and down 100. And at this point, you should be able to click over into your game simulator. And depending on what button you push, you should be able to see that your sprite moves. So let's just check in with everybody, um, Padmini, if you don't mind, and let's see if they're uh, if they are at this step, because we would have completed this step at this time. Awesome. All right, great. Let's keep going then. Perfect. Great news. All right, so moving on here, um, what we're going to do is now we're going to spawn projectile sprites. So in my game, uh, or in our game that we're creating, rather, um, you might remember that our projectiles, again, are going to be these, these arrows. Um, so let's go over, and we are going to define those projectiles now. So um, Padmini, could you please put up um, a poll question number two really quickly? Sure. Uh, which is to see, um, we're about to use milliseconds and tell the game what to do on a certain millisecond interval. We have heard from Steve. Yeah, I was just looking. OK, so now I've got over 50% have responded. I'll just give it just another moment or two for other folks to respond. OK, the, the, I'm going to end the poll here and share the results. Um, so we had uh, four folks uh, so in total respond. It looks like about half of those folks said five seconds, and half of the folks said a half of a second. And the actual answer is um, 500 milliseconds is a half of a second. So, OK, so let's do this. We're going to go and under game, we are going to be basically making a statement here that says, hey, every half second, I want you to do something. So we're going to grab this section of block code, and we're going to set it in a new location in our script editor. So again, from game. Uh, on game update every 500 milliseconds, just drag that out here to the script editor. Okay. So at this point, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to go over into variables and we're going to create a new variable. And what we're going to call this variable is going to be called lane. And basically, the lanes that we're going to be referring to here are going to be for where the projectile fall. We're going to consider this to be lane one this to be lane two, lane three, and lane four. And oh, by the way, those line up and are aligned with left, up, down, and right. So um, we're going to create a variable called lane, L-A-N-E. So I might have gone a little fast. So let me, let me just back up a second. What I did to create the lane variable is I clicked on variables. I clicked on make a variable. And I just typed in lane, and I, and I hit OK. I think it'll bark at me because I already created it. Um, but at this point, you should have a variable here named lane. And what we're going to do is we're just going to simply drag that reference to lane, and we're going to replace player one with it. So at this point, it, it kind of kicked out this player one reference, which is fine. I'll just the, the way you can throw things away is by just grabbing it and dragging it over here. Um, sorry, and I did it in the right. I did it in the wrong spot. Oh, Steve, on game. I did the wrong thing. Okay, so what I was supposed to be doing here, and so I apologize. I missed a step. Okay, I know what I did wrong. So I apologize again, everyone. So after we created the lane variable, my mistake. I needed to grab the set lane to zero. Again, my apologies. So what we're saying here is like, hey, on game update, every half second, I want you to set the lane, because that's where we're going to drop the projectile. 
So in order to, to make that selection, we're just going to go to math. Um, and basically, we're going to be utilizing um, it's all one section here. But if you scroll about 3 quarters of the way down here to pick random, uh, we're going to be selecting that. And we're going to take this pick random. And you'll notice that I'm, while I'm still holding it, there's a, a red dot next to the word pick. And if I get that close enough over to the 0 in set lane to 0, I can replace that 0 so that the statement reads set lane to pick random 0 to 10. Okay, now, I don't have 10 lanes here. We only have four. So we're going to update this to say pick, effectively pick lane 1 through 4 to send our projectiles down. OK, and so just as the reminder here, what that's going to do for us is the lanes are going to correspond with left, right, up, and down. OK, now that we've told it, we're going to say, hey, every half second, I want you to pick a random number. Now we need to tell it what to do when it's picked that number. And for that, we're going to go to logic. And funnily enough, I don't know that I had logic defined uh, in our presentation. But the logic here is going to allow us to basically let the code make a decision depending on the result of which random number has been selected. OK? So at this point, um, and just in case you didn't see it, let me just kind of zoom in a little bit here. If you didn't notice how I changed that, um, we grabbed that pick random. And I just basically, when the two red dots showed up, I was able to drop it right here. And that allowed us to have the statement of set lane and then updated pick random one to four. And now we're going to tell the code what to do depending on which one of those numbers has been selected. Okay. Over here. All right. So, all right. So we're going to create the projectiles, as I mentioned. And so now we've got the logic. And the logic here is, is going to be. Now we have to tell it that it's going to basically, um, depending on which lane is chosen, what we're going to do. So here, we're just going to simply go and grab from logic. We're going to go get the conditional. And so right now, the condition that we're going to grab is a comparison. And that way, we can compare one value to another. Okay, And we're going to grab that whole thing here. And you might have noticed, just as the way that I had dragged past a moment ago, it's again, we're going to get this nice red and a connector. And that's going to allow me to replace the statement of true with this bit of logic. So when I'm done, it's going to say if, right this moment, it says if 0 equals 0, then. And that's where we should be right now. So again, what I did is I just grabbed that from the logic and replaced the true statement with that. OK? Now, what we need to do, though, is, is this you know, we're going to actually make it say if lane equals. So in order to do that, we just go back to variables. We can grab this lane variable. We're going to just drag it over here. And just like we've done a few times now, we're going to use that little red connector to change an interior piece. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to replace the if. So now, and it kind of makes sense to me anyways. We're going to say every 500 milliseconds, pick one to four. And then I'm going to tell it what to do. So if the lane equals 1, do something. OK? We're going to have some statements here for lane 2, lane 3. And then on lanes 4 is a little special. And I'll talk about that here in a moment. But we're going to, be, um, we're going to reuse this lane equals 1. And we're going to copy that a few times because we're going to make something that says if lane equals 2 or lane equals 3. Just be kind of conscientious where you right click here. Um, you're going to want to right click so that you can kind of see on my screen where it, it's yellow around lane equals one. And I'm going to click duplicate. And I'll pause in just a moment here. But that brings me to this statement here where now I now have a lane equals, an extra lane equals. And I'm going to duplicate that again so that I've got two of these guys. Well, what we need to do is we're going to make statements here for what happens when lane equals two, what happens when lane equals three. Okay. I don't quite have enough logic here. So in fact, we need, and because we have a few decisions, it's if one or if lane equals two or if lane equals three, and then, then we're going to have an else statement, which is effectively going to be lane number four. But we need a little bit more real estate here in order to do that. So I'd like for you to press the plus sign two times. 
I'm going to, I'm going to drop these in and then I'll, I'll make sure that everybody's caught up. So we're going to take the lane and we're going to kind of drop it in here to make it look sort of similar to before. So now it says if lane equals one, then, and we haven't filled in the then yet, else if lane equals two, then, again, we haven't filled that in. Now we're going to have a else if lane equals three, then, and then lane four is special. That's going to be like, hey, if it didn't, didn't land on one, two, or three, then do this. And that's how we're going to handle uh, lane number four, which is corresponds with the right arrow key. Okay, so everybody is doing awesome so far. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to kind of again define the projectiles that are going to fall, and we're going to set the speed and where they're going to fall from in this particular step. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back up to sprites. Because we're going to kind of, again, we're going to be setting a sprite of a projectile and telling it what to do. So I'm going to, under, under sprites, create the very first option is set my sprite to sprite square of kind player. And I'm going to drag that out. And I'm going to put it under my very first lane. So if, if lane equals 0, then do this. Okay, And I'm going to basically drop a similar statement because we need to tell it for each lane what we want to happen. So I'm just very simply going to go back to sprites and grab this statement again and pull it under here. Don't worry that it currently says my sprite, my sprite too. We're going to fix that in just a second. So again, sprites, you could do this a number of ways. You can duplicate them or you can just keep grabbing them the way that I'm doing here. So at this point, as I've already kind of mentioned a few times, the lanes are going to correspond with left. Lane one is going to be left. Um, lane two is going to be up. Lane three is going to be down. And lane four is going to correspond with the right arrow. So we're going to try to make it a little bit easier for us to read by going in and creating variables that would be for the four directions. So um, we're going to go to the variable section here and click Make a Variable. And I'm just going to think through these kind of left to right. So my first variable, I'm just going to type the word left. Press OK. Nothing else to do yet. I'm going to click Make a Variable. I'm going to make one called Up. Press OK. And now I'm going a little fast. So I'm going to kind of slow down for this one. So then, so we've done left and up. So I'm going to make a variable named right. And then finally, I'm going to make a variable named left. Oh, if I can spell. All right, so my variable is left. So, oh, sorry, oops. Left, right, up, and geez, Steve, it's down. There we go. So now I have all four of my directions. So just without doing anything else, we should see under variable list here the four directions. So up, right, left, and down. OK. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make the, we're going to again correspond. So for lane equals one, we're going to set left. Okay, and then we'll, we'll work on the rest of this statement in a moment. Where lane equals two, we want to set that to be up. And I'll show the code here in just a second. For lane number three, so again, left, up. Down is going to be this one. So lane three is going to be down. And then the the only other one would be right. So we're going to, for our else statement, it's set right. OK, so now we have variable name. Thank you, Padmini, for putting in all the steps or whoever is doing that, uh, Roshin. Um, OK, so uh, all right, great. So we're doing really good here so far. So what we're going to do is I've already kind of shown. Let me just pull up one thing here. It's a visual assistant, I think, where you can see here again where I said one would be left, two is going to be up, three will be down, and then else is right. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is this is kind of, well, I think this is an easy step. Maybe I'm wrong, but now we're going to go to each one of these sprites and we're going to select the corresponding arrow. So I'm going to just click on. For set left to sprite, I'm going to click on the gray box here. As I, if you remember from the beginning of the call, I mentioned that we had already pre-created some of these assets for you. 
Um, again, later on, you can go and kind of make them anything you would like, but for the interest of time, um, we're going to go ahead and select this orange left arrow. And I'm going to do the same step for up, down, and right. So clicking into the gray box, going over to my assets, and clicking the appropriate arrow. So left points left, up points up, down. I'm going to grab the my assets. I'm going to grab my down arrow, say done. And then finally, set right. My assets, the right arrow. I'm going to pause for just a moment and let folks catch up. We're running a little late or like a little light on time here. So I'm going to keep going. Um, at this point, the, the next step that we need to do is because this is not going to be a player sprite, we want to go ahead and tell the code that this is actually a projectile. So for just these four statements, we're going to simply go in here and change it to project. Because all four arrows are, are projectiles, OK? Now, so that's pretty cool. And you can see my, my code just updated. So this is actually great. This is pretty good progress that we're making here where we've got our arrows. But we don't want the arrows to start in the middle of the screen, right? If you remember the actual game, the the um, objects start at the top and they fall down at a certain speed. So what we're going to do is we need to define where we want the sprite to start and at what speed we want it to, um, to go towards the floor. So to make that happen, we're going to go here under sprites. And we're going to first start with the speed. So the, it's referred to as velocity here. So I'm under sprites. There's a couple sections here, but I'm going to go under the physics section and we're going to grab set the my sprite velocity. Okay. And we're going to drag that. I'm just going to actually just drag it almost over into the new section because we're going to need four of these anyways. So I'm just going to drag it here so I can duplicate a few of them. I'm going to kind of do that quick, but I'll, I'll slow down here. And again, it doesn't matter which one you duplicate because right now they're kind of all the same. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag each one of these for each lane. So I'm just going to drag this one, and I'm going to put it under left. Okay, so set left, and we're going to tell this in a moment what to do for left. I'm going to grab this guy, and I'm going to place it under what to do if it's up. I'm going to take this one and place it here, what to do if it's down. And then lastly, I'm going to take one here, and I'm going to say what to do if it's right. Now, you might have noticed. I'm getting errors here again because this variable is undefined. But that's OK, because we actually want this to be our left variable. So we can just say, hey, set left to be the sprite, set left at this velocity. So I'm just going to simply go in and select left so that it matches. OK, the, um, we don't have a speed here because it's not moving right to left. So I'm just going to put 0 for that value. And we're going to leave vy at 50 pixels per second. Okay. I'm going to do that for the rest of these, and then I'll, I'll pause. So I'm going to just, I did left, and, and I set it for vx is 0, vy 5. Now here for up, we're going to come in, and we need to change our variable from my sprite to up, and velocity vx to be 0. And I can just push tab, but there's nothing to change here. It's done. For the down variable, or excuse me, for the down section, I'm going to change that variable to say down. Zero for the VX, 50 pixels a second for VY. Got one more to do, and then I'll pause. And I'm going to set that zero pixels and 50. Now, what you'll see is just without doing anything more, that's pretty cool. We what we did is we said, hey, you know, we haven't told it where to start, so it's going to just default to start the projectiles in the middle of the screen, and they just start falling. Let me pause for a second here. Thanks, Mimi. So um, we told it how fast, right? Now we need to tell it where. So. Back, um, we're going to just go back under sprites and sort of in the same place we were under physics before and what we were playing with before was velocity. Now, very similarly, we're going to tell 
all four positions, um, left, up, down, and right, what position to start at. And they kind of correspond with our lanes. So I'm gonna just drag this, and because I know I need four copies of it again, I'm just gonna drag my first copy to the, the workspace or the script editor. I'm gonna right click it, and I'm just gonna duplicate that a few times, okay? Because we're gonna be dropping that again for left, up, down, and right. So I'm gonna take the first one, doesn't matter where we put it, they're all the same right now. I'm just gonna input it here under the set left. I'm gonna set this one under set up, one under set down. I know I'm doing that a little bit fast. I'm gonna pull this one under set right. Now, as it was before, and I'm looking at our time, we've got about 10 minutes. Um, as it was before, again, it's unhappy about these uh, references to my sprite that are undefined. So like you might expect, we're gonna match it with the corresponding direction. So left to this one. And I'm gonna paste our positions here into chat. It's always gonna be y equals eight for these. So the only thing that's really changing is gonna be our x position. But you can watch as I do it here. So for left, we're gonna update the x position to be 30 and y position to be eight. Okay, and I'll show you when we're, and that is basically gonna, now it's gonna tell it to start to drop that up here. But of course it's unhappy because I have some other um, variables that are not properly defined. So let's fix that to be up. And as I paste it in chat, for up, we would want the X position in this case to be 60 and the Y position to be eight. And I'm just pressing tab to get through those two. I realize I'm going a little fast, but let me do these next two and then we'll see how everybody's doing. For down, I'm gonna change the variable to say down. I'm gonna look over here and I said down is gonna be X100 and y equals eight. If you remember eight is kind of at the top there. And you can really see, I think, where you can just visually see where it's gonna to start to drop that based on the way that coordinate show. And then finally, for the last one here for right, we're gonna update and set that to the x position of 130. And the y position of eight. And I hit enter and then, sorry, my nose is itching a lot. So now we can see we're really making progress here. A great job, Roshi. Um, great job, my volunteers, for putting that information out there. Thank you very much. So now we can see that our projectiles, you know, if you all are able, are kind of caught up, you should be able to see something similar as the following. We've got our projectiles falling and they're falling in the right location. And we're making really good progress. In fact, there's only a few steps left. Uh, it'll be a, interesting to see if we can complete it in, in eight minutes or not, but it's really, really close. Um, we only have two other things left. Um, one is like kind of dealing with the score and the lives, and the other is dealing with collisions. And that's the whole game, right? So we're really close. So if you can stick with me, um, let's go ahead and do the part where we're going to set up our scores and our lives and the end game behavior. And if we have time, we'll finish with the collisions and you'll have a working game where we're really close. So in order to set the scores, lives, and end game behavior, I would encourage you to scroll back up, especially if you're like down here. You basically, we're gonna be dragging some information to the on start block. And so if it's, if it's off your screen, it can be difficult to navigate to. So I just scroll down and I'm gonna go into the info section. Because if you remember info is where we're gonna say, hey, you know, here's where we set the score and you know, here's where we're gonna set our lives. And so that's exactly what we want to do. We want to say, hey, at the start of the game, I'm going to drag this out. On the start of the game, score is zero, right? Move that up a little bit. Now, score is zero, cool, but let's also define our lives, okay? Um, and to do that, under info again, score, there's a section called life. It's the second one. We're going to take set life to three, and we're going to drag that out to the on start. Three is a little bit, that's a little too challenging. So I'm actually gonna change it to be five. And I'm gonna stop there for a moment. And what you should see is if you were able to add in those two pieces of code, what you should notice here is that now you have five hearts, which represents our five lives and our score, which is currently zero. 
And right now we're not losing lives and we're not getting score because we haven't defined how that happened. But that is something that happens really soon. So we've got the next step here is we're gonna go under game because we wanna tell it what to do when, when we've lost all of our lives, okay? So in the game section here under gameplay, there's just a few options and really we want the third one, which says game over lose. We're gonna drag that out to a blank spot on our script area. Okay, now the reality is, excuse me, I forgot to step. Let me drag that to the trash. Um, <clears throat> I apologize. We actually wanted to go, so oops, apologies again. So under info, I think it is. On life zero. So um, I hear this. I got lost <laughs> in my own thing here. So okay. So apologies again. So under info score life, we want this one on life zero. And my apologies again for adding to confusion. So for on life zero though, what we do want is we want the game to be over at that point. So that's how I got confused. So just to recap here, since I screwed up. Um, under info, under score life, we want to drag the on life zero out to the plain uh, script area. And then under game, we're going to grab this game over lose button. And we're going to put that here under on life zero. Because we're going to be a little happier, we're going to make it say, hey, on life zero, you still technically win. So I changed all I did here is I just clicked lose to win. And then I'm going to push this uh, plus button here because I'm going to have it do more confetti basically when when the game's over so at this point we haven't taken away you know what happens if we collide but that's going to be the the only thing that remains so at this point we are done uh with that step so all we have to do left again before we have a working game is tell it what to do when our projectiles collide with the wall or what they do when they overlap with our player sprite I'm just looking, we've got about three minutes. So for this step seven in the, the book, or in the guide rather, um, under scene, uh, we're gonna scroll down to tile maps. So it goes under scene, it goes screen, camera, effects, and tile maps. And here I'm gonna grab the uh, on sprite of kind player hits wall at location. And we're gonna drag that out to a, a blank spot in our script area, okay? I think we can get this step done um, um, for when projectiles collide with the wall. So um, what we need to do is we're just gonna, we have to go in and kind of grab from the, the sprite section, um, excuse me. So under sprites, we want it to tell it to like, to destroy the sprite. So basically when, when the projectile hits the wall, and we're going to define that in just a second. We want it to destroy that sprite. So we're going to drag this destroy my sprite here. Um, but we've got a couple things to kind of clean up. One of them is, is we need to make it say projectile. So because we want the, the projectiles, not our player, but when the projectiles hit the wall, we want something to happen to them. Okay. So right now this should read on sprite of kind projectile hits wall. And what we can do is you can just grab this word sprite and replace my sprite with it. Okay, that kind of drops out this little, little my sprite section here. You can either press and delete while it's highlighted or you can leave it there or you can drag it over to the trash. But basically what we've said now is, hey, when a sprite of a projectile hits the wall, destroy it. And I want to destroy it in spectacular fashion, right? So we're going to say, hey, when it destroys, do like fire. And I want the effect to last for 100 milliseconds. So let's see when this guy, let's see if that works. And so now we should see that as the projectiles hit the ground, they, um, they turn into fire. But that's not it. We need one more thing. And I realize we're out of time. Um, the last thing that we'll do here is if you go to game, excuse me, uh, info rather, and what we would do is you would 
you would reduce your life by one of that, okay? And so the only thing that we haven't done yet, and so now we should see that our lives start to go down as these hit. So the only mechanic of the game that we haven't finished, and I'll finish it up for the recording if you all have to leave, I understand, but I'm gonna, I'll keep going so the recording is finished and you can come back and view it. The last step that we really have to do is this piece here, which is the um, projectile collides with the player spray. And after that, it's uh, about playing the game. So again, the, the last piece here is just what to do when it overlaps with our sprite. So what we do to make that happen is um, under sprites, we're gonna scroll down a little bit here and there's the overlap section. And we're gonna grab the on sprite of kind player overlaps other sprite of kind player. We're gonna drag that out to our code space. Uh, code editor, script editor, boy, getting the names all wrong. And again, we're gonna want something to get destroyed when that happens. So um, let's just be kind of kind of clear here though. So on sprite of kind player overlaps with other sprite of kind we actually want this to say projectile. So if you didn't quite catch what I did there, we just dragged the on sprite of kind player overlaps other sprites of kind. This did say player. And then I've just updated this to say projectile. And what do we want this to do? Well, we're going to want to destroy something, uh, the, specifically the projectile. So I'm going to go back to sprites and I'm going to grab the destroy my sprite. Okay? And we're going to drag that into this code block. Okay. What you're gonna do here is you're just gonna simply, and again, we're so close to being done. We're gonna grab other sprite and we're gonna take that and we're gonna overwrite my sprite with that. So we're basically saying, hey, um, when we overlap, I want you to destroy the other sprite, the projectile, right? And now let's have that thing do something kind of cool when it gets destroyed. For that one, I'm going to choose disintegrate, and I want that effect to last 100 milliseconds. And then all we have to do left, the last piece to actually make a playable game here, is we want our score to increase when that happens, right? So I'm just going to go back here into info, and I'm going to say change score by one. I'm going to drop that in here. And now, at this time, We've got a functional game, okay? Like I can go and you'll see my score is going up. Um, I'm gonna let, as I kind of ran into projectiles, my score increased. And as the projectiles hit the floor, my lives went away. And so hopefully you all were able to get to that point. Again, for the, for the recording, because I know that we're over time, I'm gonna just cover two other quick things. To play the game in full screen, you can click this button. And this is kind of how you saw when I was presenting it before. My sound's on, so this time it'll just kind of collect one or two. And then I'm gonna let it bomb out. And so that's how you can um, share the, or sorry, how you can play the game in full screen. And then the last thing, uh, and then to get out of full screen, you can switch this. And then the last thing I wanna to, to tell you all is you can also share this game with your friends or maybe, you know, caretakers. And again, you do not need to sign up for this to happen. All you do is click this share button here. Okay. You could change the name of the project if you wanted to, but by default, your project, because you get we started you um, with an asset, uh, was with this name. So if you just say publish project, that's it. You've now got a URL that you could share with a friend. So I'm just gonna, I did a copy of that URL. I'm just gonna paste it into a new screen. And this will just basically load the game that they could play. But you could also, um, they can also take a look at your code um, to see what you did. And so you can kind of show off the hard work that you did during today's session. And you can go in and edit the code if you desire. So that pretty much, again, over time a little bit, but really appreciate everybody joining. Um, I believe that, um, Again, all of the information uh, for what we just did is located here on our, or sorry, on the uh, agenda for this particular session. In that activity guide, just to restate again, um, does have all the steps that we just went through, as well as a finalized code, which you can also see at the bottom of the guide here. So if you need to see kind of like what this 
should look like when the game is complete. All that information is here for you. So on behalf of the whole team here on the call presenting and, and volunteering, we really appreciate you all joining. Have a great rest of your sessions.